when they heard this. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about twelve in all, and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. And this continued for two years. Oh, listen to this part so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Wow. Father, God bless your word to our understanding today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Please keep your Bibles open to this portion of God's word. Paul is traveling all over the Mediterranean seaports. Apollos, another evangelist, is going up towards Corinth, and Paul comes to one of the main seaports on the Mediterranean of Ephesus. It was a Greek city, and then Rome conquered. It was a Roman city, and as in most of the cities in those days, seaports It was just a real sin-packed society. People came in and docked, and and then everything broke loose in a seaport town. Overlooking the, the beautiful seaport area, on a hill overlooking was a temple of Diana, the goddess of Ephesus who was believed to be the giver of life. And people would come and and they would worship at the temple of Diana. They would worship there. And and in those days, such was the, the warp of society that the way that they worshiped was the sailors would come and they have uncovered these etched stones at the seaport there where they would have footprints leading up to the temple of Diana. You say, well, isn't that marvelous? All those sailors were so wonderfully worshipful. No, no, you don't understand how they worshiped in those days. There were temple prostitutes at the temple of Diana. And the sailors were on shore leave. My, my, my. The bad stuff on. You say, you're making this up. Oh, no. It's there. And so Paul comes to this sin-ravaged society full of idol worship and witchcraft and all kinds of things. And he's passing by the dock area and by the seaport And he comes across 12 fellas who the Holy Spirit bears witness with his heart. These guys are believers. They're followers of God. Not the false gods, not the idols. These are the real deal. Bore witness with his heart. Have you ever had that happen? Where you meet someone, you don't know them, they haven't said a word, but you knew that you knew that you knew. They're a fellow believer in Jesus Christ. That's what happened. It's an operation of the gift of the Holy Spirit, of discerning of spirits. And you just thought you were being really savvy. (laughs) No, God's at work. He wants us to know who our brothers and sisters are. Well, Paul saw saw these 12 men who were believers, he knew, and he began to converse with them, and he said... He asked him this question. Uh, Have you received the 
Holy Spirit sent you believed? Now, out of the blue, that's kind of a strange question, isn't it? You wouldn't think it's normal, but we'll see how, it, how normal it really was. And they said, we haven't, uh, duh, we haven't even heard that there's a Holy Spirit. And Paul's beginning to wonder, well, maybe the Holy Spirit messed up. He says, well, then, then what, uh, who, who led you to the Lord? And he says, we're followers of John the Baptist. That clicked right in. John the Baptist was a godly man. He preached repentance from sin, that you need to get rid of sin and be baptized in water. And when you come up out of the water, that's where Jesus was when the Spirit came down and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So Paul, by the Holy Spirit's wisdom, picks right up. He says, You remember what John used to preach? And they're thinking, Yeah, yeah. He says, Let me remind you. He said, one's coming after me who's mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. And when he comes, he'll baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. He said, don't look at me. There's one coming after me. And Paul said, I want to tell you who he is. His name is Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And right at that moment, these 12 Baptist boys who'd been baptized under John's baptism, they were open, they received the Word of God, and they said, we need to be baptized in relationship to this one called Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And so right then, with just the witness of the Spirit happening between them, Paul takes them down into the water And all 12 of them, he begins to baptize them. Now, he did not just go down there and play splish splash. There's some some people believe, well, that's all you need. You just get to splash them with a little, you know, take a little rose and hit them in the head with some water. That's not baptism, folks. Now, if you're down in a in a pool of water, you got to go under the water. It's being to dip and immerse, is what the word really means. And so he took them down, all 12 of them, one at a time. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And they came up. And I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. One by one by one till all 12 are soaking wet but born again. Because they've received Jesus. And then, right after that, Paul didn't stop. Well, isn't that enough? They're saved. They're dripping wet in water baptism. What more is there? Paul said, we're not done here yet. And he laid hands upon them. And they were all baptized in the Holy Spirit and began to speak in languages they'd never learned. That's that's what most people have the problem with. They say, well, I don't care about being baptized in the Spirit. I just don't want that other stuff. I'm sorry. It comes with the package deal. And it's worth it. But he laid hands upon them, and they all, all 12, not 30%, 30%, not 20%, not 50%, not 7 All 12 were baptized in the Holy Spirit after they were baptized in water. And then they went in to take on that evil city. And God did a revival work in the city of Ephesus. And what transpired was ultimately, you read it there with me, Before Paul is ready to leave, everybody in all of Asia had heard about this one Jesus. Because those sailors were coming to shore. And after a great revival happened in the city of Ephesus where they took their idols and they burned them because they'd met Jesus. 
And those same sailors, they weren't coming for the wrong reason anymore. They were getting back on the ship and they were traveling to every port Then they would tell them, there's a Savior and His name is Jesus. I've been redeemed. Well, let's look at this question. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? First of all, lets us know they were believers. That's a good place to start. They were believers. They were followers of John the Baptist. They'd repented of their sins. They'd ceremonially washed in the, in the Jordan River as an outward sign of what God did on the inside. Confessing their sins and being cleansed on the inside by that confession and baptized on the outside. But pastor, how can you say they were believers? Uh, They didn't know Jesus yet. I'm not saying it. Paul's saying it. I think he ought to know. You see, they were believers. They just didn't know his name as yet. I love the story told by Glenn Gray, missionary. He's off the field now, but Glenn tells the story of when he was taken over to Africa. He was leading a missions group in the Ivory Coast. And they went, they were going to a very remote tribe, and they didn't even know the language of the tribe. They had a translator from a another tribe that was close, but they didn't know what was going to happen. And so they traveled to this remote tribe, and the Holy Spirit moved upon Glenn to just stand up in front of them without the interpreter, because they really didn't know if it's going to work or not. And Glenn simply said, I come in the name of Jesus. And Glenn says, you could have knocked me down with a breath of fresh air because everybody in the whole village, I don't know what I said that got them, but they all fell to the ground, bowed themselves to the ground, and began just shouting. The chief of the tribe, the chieftain of the tribe, he's on the ground. Glenn says, I didn't know what to do. I'd never had that kind of reaction before. He said, I hadn't preached. I just stood up and I said, I come in the name of Jesus. And after a while, the people are just shouting and lifting their hands and bowing before him. And the chief came up and he had a little bit of articulation with the interpreter and and began to tell this. For many, many centuries, we have known of a great one, but we did not know his name. We had waited for the great one to come. And when you said, the name of Jesus, something inside everybody in the whole village That's the one we've been waiting for. And they all bowed at the name of Jesus. And they were able to start a church there and great move of God by a simple, solitary name. Every knee bowed. (laughs) Every tongue confessed at the name of Jesus. You see, We don't always have all the answers for these things, but it seems pretty clear. God knew that their heart was right through repentance. They had lived up to the level that they'd been taught. And all it took was Paul to say, you remember when John the Baptist mentioned somebody following him? I want to tell you his name. His name is Jesus. And the 
witness of the Holy Spirit came, and those 12 men knew this is the one we've been waiting on. And they said, we want everything that this Jesus has to offer. And they went down in the water, were baptized again into relationship with the one who bears the name of Jesus. It's so important, people, to realize that there are people around the world who may not know his name as yet. And they're waiting for someone to come and tell them his name. You really believe that, Pastor? Oh, yeah. Because I read in my Bible that there was a guy living in a heathen land, surrounded by idol worship. And he reached out to heaven one day to a God he didn't know the name of. And God revealed himself to a fellow by the name of Abram. And he said, I'm going to make a covenant with you because you've reached out to me. And God made himself real to someone who had not known his name. They were believers. When we talk about believers today, we're talking about people who have believed upon this one, Jesus Christ. Received him as Savior and Lord. So the first part of this question, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? That's the first part of the the gamut. To believe. To receive him as Savior and Lord. The next thing we learn from this question is this. That there's something more after you first believe. There's something more after you first believe. John spoke of it. Matthew chapter 3 and beginning with verse number 1. In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea saying... Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Down to verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. First Jesus, the Messiah, will come. Then he will become the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Jesus is going to do the baptizing. Several months ago we talked about this and compared water baptism to the baptism in the Holy Spirit. How that you have someone willing to be baptized And you have the baptizer, and his name is Jesus. He does the job. He fills us with his Holy Spirit. I was a Methodist preacher. I pastored three small churches in southern Ohio. I preached three times in the morning, two times in the evening, one of them being a youth service every Sunday. And I was living in all the light that I had in the gospel. I preached about Jesus as Savior. I preached as Jesus as the coming King. I didn't know anything else. I'd been raised and I was preaching the gospel. But then the Lord began to open up the word to me. And I began to see as the Bible began to come alive that after salvation, after Jesus became their Savior, that he did something else in the lives of the apostles and the lives of people in the book of Acts. And it's recorded again and again and again and again. There's more. There's more. John the Baptist said there's more. Jesus said there's more. You remember what Jesus said in the first chapter of the book of Acts. And being assembled together with them, He commanded them. He did not request. He did not say, if you'd like to. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you've heard from me. For, 
Same scripture. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they came together, they asked him, Lord, will you restore the kingdom? He says, it's not for you to know the time and the seasons. They just kind of blew off what he just said. They wanted to focus about the end of time. They wanted to focus about other things. But Jesus wanted them to get their head corrected and their head on straight that there's more. Don't go anywhere till you've got it. And they went to the upper chamber and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit just a few days later. John the Baptist said there's more. Jesus said there's more. The apostle Peter and John, when they went up to Samaria, said there's more after salvation. The apostle Paul found out there's more after salvation. Folks, if you're not getting this, there's more. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Since you faith, invest faith in God. You see in Luke chapter 11, so, they, so I say to you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be open. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? The answer would be, that was weak. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? That's better. If he asks for an egg, will he scramble him up a scorpion? <laughs> if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? How much more? Because there's more. It's a matter of faith, asking in faith, believing. The fourth thing we learn from this question is this. The question reveals is that it must be received. It must be received. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? It's been offered, but have you received it? Receiving is our part. Believing is our part. The giving is God's part. Jesus baptizes. Look at the free gift of salvation. How many of you realize over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on the cross and laid down his life's blood to pay the price of your forgiveness, to wash your sins away? He did it. It's an established fact. He did it. How many of you think that everybody on the planet has received what was given. He laid down his life. He paid the price tag, but people have not redeemed or picked up what he laid down for them. It's a matter of receiving. The free gift of salvation was purchased at great price. Jesus laid down his life, and yet people have to believe and then receive it for themselves. You see, I... I, I, had a, I had a trouble with this part of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just being open and honest. I wasn't, you know, I was a Methodist preacher. I wasn't all that smart. I, I didn't have it all together. I still don't, but maybe a little bit more today. And, and, and so I said, well, I began to see in the Bible as I studied, yes, there's this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah, I think everybody ought to have it. I think it's available to everybody. Okay, Lord. Hit me. I'm ready. Hit me. Nothing happened. And then I concluded, well, it must not be for me. I, it didn't. You see, I wanted it to happen my way. But God baptizes His way. Let me give you an illustration of it. Uh, 
Any of you thirsty? Some of you are. I have this beautiful picture of crystal clear ice water. Mm -mm -mm. And so I'll just take my cup and uh, I'm willing to pour in some of that crystal clear ice water for you. Hey, I, I, are you up for it? You, uh, you, uh, how many would like a nice crystal clear? The water's good. I mean, it's good. It's crystal clear. It's ice cold. How about, how about, how about you, Jim? Thirsty? You're going to pass. Yeah, I bet you would if you drank that. You'd pass out. <laughs> See, I wanted the baptism of the Holy Spirit my way, but there's some things the Lord needed to clean up within me before he could pour into me. Need to clean up my attitude. I'd been raised to believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that was for yesteryear, not for today. I had to get some things cleaned up in my thinking. I had to get some things cleaned up in my attitude because I thought those people that received the baptism were a bunch of nut jobs. Well, well maybe, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I didn't understand everything. I had to have some work done on the inside of me before he could fill me. But the Holy Spirit's up to the task. He's able to fill us with his Holy Spirit. But sometimes he needs to do some work on the vessel that he's going to pour into. Because the Holy Spirit not only fills us, he also wants to cleanse us. So, receiving it's not just about receiving it the way you want to receive it well i'll take i'll take an order of the holy ghost uh, with a side of miracles and uh and hold the tongues hit me we got to receive god's way there might be some attitudes the lord had to clean up some attitudes that i had and some some uh reservations that i had you know how he cleaned him up? Through his word. Because the same Holy Spirit that moved upon people to write the word is the same one that wants to fill you and he wants to set your mind right and he will guide you into all truth if you let him. They were open and they were receptive, these 12 men. They had been believers. They had received salvation if you will and then they completed it by receiving jesus they were baptized in water but the next thing about it is the fifth lesson from this question is found in the sixth verse and when paul had laid his hands upon them the holy spirit came upon them they spake with tongues and prophesied they spoke in a language they'd never learned they were baptized by a Jesus they just met and spoke in a language they'd never learned. We don't comprehend why this is, but God has purpose and reason. The Bible says that the tongue is the most unruly of all parts of the body. I, you can just listen for 10, 15 minutes any place you go and you can find out that tongue, that, that's, a, that's something else. Going against this one, lifting up, putting down, and harsh words and whatever. And so the Lord decided what he was going to do. He was going to make a sign of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the initial physical evidence that you would have a way of communicating from your spirit to God's spirit without going through the stupidity of our minds. <laughs> a language we'd never learned. So that we can intercede that we can praise him you see the people on the day of pentecost they were in the upper room all gathered there 120 of them or so and they were baptized in the holy spirit and began to speak in languages they'd never learned but they were just stupid galileans they didn't know what was going on how many of you are not all that swift either they go they go out in the in the temple mount and they begin just continuing to speak they didn't know what they were saying it was, it was not bypassing. It was going through a roundabout way, not through the mind, through the Spirit. And the people that heard them said, 
how do these goofball Galileans, these hillbillies from up in Galilee, know that they, they're unlearned. They don't know a thing. They can't hardly talk their own language. <laughs> and I hear them speaking the praises of God in the language from my hometown on the other side of the, of the Mediterranean. It's a God thing. And God used it as a witness because the people say, oh, they're just drunk. And the guy says, oh, no, they're not drunk because I'm hearing what I'm hearing, and it's a God thing. And Peter used it. He says, these men are not drunk as you were supposed. It's just early in the day. This is what Joel prophesied, that this is what Joel said was going to happen. In the latter days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall dream dreams. Your old men shall see visions. You see, upon my sons and my daughters, I'm going to pour out my spirit. Paul was going to the people, the 12 there, and saying, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? He didn't even tell them what they were going to receive. Notice, he did not prep them and say, well, you know, uh, what's going to happen? No, no. If you received, he said, no, I haven't heard about it. Well, let me get you in touch with Jesus. We'll go through the water baptism. And then all he did, he didn't say anything else. All he did was lay hands upon them. And they were all, say it with me, all. Can you spell it for me? All. All 12 were baptized with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in languages they'd never learned without a prompting, without anybody telling them what to do. It was a God thing. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? It's a matter of coming in faith, of being a believer. First of all, you need to be a believer. And then you need to come and say, I believe that Jesus has only good things for me. I believe Jesus when he said there's more. I believe John the Baptist when he said there's more. I believe the Apostle Paul and Peter when they said there's more. And I want everything that Jesus has for me. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? It's a good question, isn't it? My friends, it's a question that deserves an answer. How many of you here today would say, yes, I've received the Holy Spirit since I believed? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now, that doesn't make us any better than anybody else. It's not about, uh, you know, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm more spiritual than you. No. It just means we've received something that God has offered. The praise is due Him. He's the one who does the job. My part is to be open to receive it. So don't get the idea that somebody say, well, I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. That doesn't make Him more spiritual than you. It just means they have access to another aspect of prayer and praise and the power of the Holy Spirit in different ways. It's God that it's about. We're baptized in His Holy Spirit. So stay away. I've been, have you ever been around those people that think they're, more, they're spiritually elite over you? Well, that bugs me. It's not their spirit, is it? not their power it's not their miracles it's god and they're bragging about it yes look at me it'd be it'd be like like that dirty old glass getting a voice and saying look at that crystal clear water in me come drink of my water nah you're just the vessel he's the living water folks Paul asked a question that deserves an answer. And the way they answered was they stepped forward 
And he could sense that they were open and they were ready and they were willing. They'd receive Jesus as Savior. They were baptized in water. He didn't skip a beat. He could sense that they were ready for everything that Jesus had for them. And he laid hands upon them one at a time, and they all were baptized in the Holy Spirit and began to praise him in a language they'd never learned. Our part's the faith. Our part's the believing. God's part is the baptizing. And look what happened after they were filled with the Spirit. They went into that town and they took on the most godless city of the Roman Empire at that time. In just a couple years' time, they have a massive book burning because people have gotten saved and they've turned in their witchcraft. They've turned in their idol worship. They put the temple of Diana out of business. And every sailor that was showing up at Ephesus was leaving a changed man and taking the gospel around the Mediterranean. You know, we really kind of need that here in Columbus, don't we? We need people coming and receiving the fullness of God's power to reach a lost world with his good news. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Only you can answer that. Let me just give you a couple quick pointers before I go any further. I'm going to ask Brother Myris to come to the keyboard, if you would, please. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Good question. But if you, the very first thing in your mind, but, well, then the Holy Spirit needs to do a little bit more work on you. We've tried to share the Scripture very clearly with you today. There is more. It's available. It's from Jesus. It's a good thing. But some people have had some bad teaching over the years and trained them against these things. Some have believed the lie that, well, it's not for everybody. Tell it to the 12 men of Ephesus. It's for everyone available. If you're a believer, it's for you. You say, well, I, I don't understand this. There's sometimes we've got to put our mind on the shelf and say, I'll get back to you on that. I had to do that when I got saved. didn't make any sense that the blood of someone who died 2,000 years ago could impact my life today, but it's true. He laid it down as a sacrifice for my sin. I had to put my thinking on the shelf just in long enough for God to do a work on the inside so that I'm not controlled by my mind, but I'm controlled by my spirit in relationship to God. I'm going to pose that question one more time as you stand to your feet, please. And I want you to hear it as if I'm asking it to you as Paul did that day. Friend, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? If you have, I want you to begin to praise Him. I want you to begin to bless His name. I want you to begin to thank Him. All over the building, all over the, the sanctuary, just begin to praise Him. If there's anyone here today, you say, well, I'm not a believer yet. This doesn't apply to me yet. I, I haven't received the Holy Spirit since I believe because I have, I'm not a believer yet. I have great news. Today can be the day you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. And He can wash all your sins away. You see, salvation is about cleansing and, and the assurance of heaven. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is about power to live the life. So my friend, if you need Jesus as Savior today, you need to become a believer. I invite you to leave where you're standing and come to an altar of prayer. My deacons, my pastors, those that I've asked to help around the altar, Sister Betty, this is her ministry of 
praying for people with the baptism to receive the baptism. God's just anointed her that way. Maybe the Lord has anointed you in that way too. We invite you to come. So I'm inviting first of all those that need to be a believer to come and say, I need Jesus in my life today. Would you pray for me? As they're coming, I also invite people that would respond to the question, the great question that deserves an answer. Have you, my friend, received the Holy Spirit since you believe? If not, would you be as bold as the 12 Baptist fellas, the 12 men of Ephesus, and say, we've not heard about it, but we're open. And they came and they received the free gift of the infilling of the Holy Spirit of God. Would you come? Be like those 12. Be like those 12 today. It's open. But pastor, I have questions. Put them on the shelf just a little bit, would you please? And the Spirit can guide you into every truth if you just let Him. I'm going to pray and then I want you to come. Heavenly Father, we believe you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. That you're not wanting to give us something that's not the best for us. And Father, should there be those here who are believers who have not received the Holy Spirit, that you would let their faith rise to say, I want everything that Jesus has to offer me. Father, I pray that you would anoint this altar area with victories today, victories of salvation, victories of the baptism. I ask that you would anoint this place as a victory for those needing healing. I'm going to be standing, Lord, in the front here, I invite you to flow through the prayers to touch the sick as well today. That all across this altar, Lord, you would move in saving grace, in baptizing power, in healing. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Know that there